Hi everyone, I welcome you to this lecture. The title of this lecture is called General Physiology. General Physiology is one of the introductory lecture we, which we give under physiology. Now what is physiology? We know that physiology is the study of uh, normal functions of organisms. But in this case, since you are medical uh, experts, you are training to be medical guys, we are looking at human physiology. So physiology, we are just looking at normal basic functions of an organism. Just the normal function, the way God created uh, the, the, the human body, how it should function, how a cell should function, how the digestive system should function, how the cardiovascular system should function, just normally, without any diseases. Okay, so that is the uh, definition of uh, physiology. Now, for us to be very good uh, physiology students, we need to start with the cell, okay, which we call general physiology. Okay, because the human body is made up of cells. Okay, these are the functional unit of life. So it's just important to understand the basics about the cell. Once we understand the basics about the cell, then uh, it's easy for us to learn physiology. Not only physiology, even other courses like uh, in biochemistry, pathology, pharmacology. They all, they are all explained at a cellular level. Okay, without wasting much time, uh, a cell is defined as a basic unit of life. And all living organisms are composed of uh, many blocks of cells. So a cell is just a structural and functional unit of the living body. So this diagram shows the organization of the human body. From physiological point of view, the, the, the functional unit is the cell. And the group of cells, they form what we call a tissue. And the group of tissues, they form an organ. And then when you put organs together, they form what we call an organ system. And then the organ system, they will form an organism. Okay. That is the general organization of the human body. But we can still go down to break the cell. You find that the cell, it is made up of organelles. And then those same organelles, you find are made up of macromolecules. And the same macromolecules are made up of molecules. And the smallest is an atom. Okay. But in terms of living, an atom is not a living thing. Okay. It doesn't have the characteristics of a living thing. It doesn't need nutrition or oxygen. It doesn't produce its own energy. It doesn't eliminate waste products. So an atom is not really um, a living organism. So we are interested in a cell. And the definition of a cell is a structural and functional unit of a living body. Okay? The basic unit of life that is able to, to carry out uh, certain metabolic processes. Now, it's just important to know that atoms can affect the performance of the cell. Okay? For the functions to take place in a cell, it needs uh, atoms. It needs molecules. Okay? What are these molecules? It needs water, oxygen. Uh, carbon dioxide, and many other nutrients, the DNA, okay, so they, re they, need, uh, they need these molecules. Actually, when you look at the cell very critically, you're going to see that the cell is dependent on these minerals, in these atomic particles, okay. It's dependent on these atomic uh, particles because the cell can only absorb these 
uh, substances when they are in atomic form or molecular form. Okay, so what are the general characteristics of the cell? Uh, it needs nutrition and oxygen. It produces its own energy necessary for its growth. Uh, it eliminates carbon dioxide and other metabolic wastes. The cell is also able to maintain the medium, that is its environment for its survival, which we call homeostasis. The cell responds to stimuli, ex uh, external stimulation, and a cell is able to reproduce by what we call division. Now, what's the structure of the cell? The diagram below, I've shown you the structure of the cell. It's made up of the cell membrane and many other organelles in the body, such as the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the plasma membranes, the lysosome, the mitochondria, and many other organelles. Okay, so we'll just quickly run through this. I know that we've, we've covered most of these things in our introductory courses, so it's just important to remind you some key uh, important things about the cell. Okay, so this is a structure of the cell. It doesn't have the cell wall. A cell has a cell membrane. Now we'll start with uh, saying something about the, the, the cell membrane. The cell membrane is a protective sheath which covers or envelops the cell body. Sometimes it's referred to as plasma membrane or plasmalemma. So you're going to find that this cell membrane is composed of about 55% protein and 40% lipids and then just 5% are carbohydrates. Okay. Now the, the, the cell membrane can be seen by what we call a microscope. And when you examine using a microscope, it's a, it's a three-layered membrane. It's a three-layered membrane. Okay, because as you can see, it has the outer face, or some books they call it a bi- a, a bilayered mem membrane, a phospholipid bilayer, okay, or for or a, um, or it can easily be described according to Danielli Davison model. It can be described as a sandwich of lipids, covered by proteins on both sides. Okay. So the major components of the cell, for example, when you talk of it's the, it's the lipids, there are two types of lipids found in the cell. We have the cholesterol, cholesterol, and we also have a phospholipid. Okay, we have a phospholipid. This wall structure is called a phospholipid. Now, cholesterol, they are arranged in between the phospholipid molecules, as you can see. Okay, Phospholipids are soft and oily structures, and so cholesterol helps to pack the phospholipids in the membrane. So cholesterol is responsible for the structural integrity of lipid layer of the cell membrane. It is involved in fluidity, which we call fluidity of the membrane, so that it can easily orient or change uh, shape. Okay. Now, the phospholipids, they, they contain a phosphorus and the fatty acids. So the phospholipids are arranged in a two-layered uh, two uh, kind of arrangement, and each phospholipid molecule resembles the head, the headed pin in shape. Okay, so it's just like this. 
each phospholipid is uh, represented by this, which is the head and the tail. Okay. Now the the, the phospholipid is the one we call the the head region is the actually the one that is hydrophilic. It easily interacts with water. But the tail region is the one that is hydrophobic. Okay, you remember these concepts. Now, um, let's quickly look at the functions of this cell membrane. Why should a cell have a cell membrane? A cell membrane protects the inside of the cell because they are dire uh, in, they are very important structures inside the cell, like the nucleus, the mitochondria. So the cell membrane protects. Okay, it how does it protect? Number two, it is selective, selectively permeable. Okay, it acts as a semi-permeable membrane which allows only some substances to pass through. Not any substances can pass through. It allows only certain substances to pass through. The, the cell membrane also performs excretory functions. Metabo uh, metabolites and other wastes. Products from the cell are excreted out through the cell membrane. It is also involved in exchange of gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide it can easily penetrate the cell membrane because these are lipid soluble gases. And it also helps to maintain the shape and size of the cell. So basically that's the function of the cell membrane. It's just to protect the insides of the cell. Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow any substances to pass through. We're going to look at it later on when we look at uh, transport of substances across the, the cell membrane. Now when we move out, when we go inside the cell, we are going to see what we call organelles. What are organelles? These are considered as small organs of the cells. Okay, these are considered as small organs of the cell. So these small organs of the cell, we have those that have a membrane and those that do not have a membrane. Okay. Those that have a membrane and those that do not have a membrane. So, some of the most important organelles are the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, peroxisomes, centrosomes, mitochondria, ribosome, cytoskeleton, and nucleus. So we need to know the functions and structure of these organelles. This is what I'm going to run through in the next, uh, uh, in the next few minutes. Okay.